How's it going? I've been using Home Assistant since 2017. The Home Assistant folks just came out with some swanky new hardware called the Home Assistant Blue, and I was fortunate enough to get my hands on one. Thanks again, fellas. In the years that I've been using Home Assistant, I've done a lot of experimentation, and as a result, my setup has gotten a bit cumbersome. So with this new hardware in hand, it seemed like a good time to start over. This isn't going to be a step-by-step -step how to get Home Assistant set up kind of guide. There are plenty of other videos to take care of that, and besides, it's gotten pretty easy. Since I'm starting over with Home Assistant, I took some time to really think about what are the most important functions and what are the best ways to get those functions functioning. So here it is, my top 10 Home Assistant priorities for getting started or for starting over. Here we go. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. A lot of my favorite projects use custom PCBs, like the BH Onofre, all of the Quinn LED boards, and the HA Switchplate. Ordering from PCBWay is pretty easy, and they're always running some kind of special, so you can be pretty sure that you're getting a good deal. They deliver fast, but most importantly, it's good quality stuff. So if you've got a project that needs custom PCBs, check out PCBWay. Number one is Home Assistant Google Drive Backups. Home Assistant Blue is an Odroid N2 Plus in a fancy case. But you don't have to have the blue to have a good Home Assistant experience. A Raspberry Pi is still a really solid hardware option for running Home Assistant. But if you run Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, chances are pretty good that eventually the SD card is going to die. And if you haven't been making backups, you could lose a lot of work. Don't ask me how I know. In my humble opinion, the best backup solution for Home Assistant is this Google Drive backup add-on because it sends copies of your backups to Google Drive. So if, or when, your Pi SD card crashes, you'll always have easy access to a recent backup. Even if you don't use a Pi for Home Assistant, the Google Drive backup add-on is still important. This is the first thing I think you should set up when you're getting started with Home Assistant. Number two, Nabucasa. Nabucasa provides secure remote access to Home Assistant. That means it can connect Home Assistant to Google Home and Aleka. Nabucasa also gives you the ability to use webhooks, which are another way to allow Home Assistant to interact with things outside your home network. It also lets you use Google's Cloud Say feature, so your text-to-speech messages can be done in just about any language, and they sound buttery smooth. A mí me gustan los tacos bañados. Nabucasa is a subscription service, and it costs $5 a month. Now, before you get all mad, Home Assistant is still free to use. You don't have to pay anything to get the functions that Nabucasa provides. Nabucasa just makes it a lot easier to get some really awesome features. And it supports a growing team of developers that, because of Nabucasa, can now work full-time making Home Assistant more awesomer. So as soon as you have your Google Drive backups set up, Sign up for Nabucasa. Number five. Yeah, I know. I skipped number three and number four. That's because I numbered them in order of importance, but I'm presenting them in the order you should install them. You see, you need to install number five before you can install number four. And you need number four before you can get number three. Is that confusing? Good. Number five. VS Code. VS Code is a text file editor on steroids. With Home Assistant the way it is now, you'll rarely need to edit text files. But if you do, VS Code is a great tool. This add-on is tied to Home Assistant, so it can auto-complete names of entities and services. It has an icon explorer, and it gives you easy access to the command line. That last part is especially important, because with command line access, you can use a simple one-line command to install number four. Number four is the Home Assistant Community Store. The stuff in Hacks comes in two main categories, integrations and front end. Integrations let Home Assistant interact with other systems. So that means things like Aleka Media Player, Sonoff LAN, or YouTube Sensor to let you know when your favorite guy posts a new video. <laughs> uh -huh. ah. 
Dang it. Front end is things like color themes and custom cards, like the bar card, mini media player, and animated background. Custom cards make your Home Assistant UI look extra cool. The easiest way to install hacks is with VS Code. Finally, we can get to number three, Aleka Media Player. This custom integration lets you use Home Assistant to tell Aleka what music to play and to send text-to-speech messages from Home Assistant through Aleka to the rest of your house. It also lets you use Aleka for actionable notifications. That's when some trigger from Home Assistant communicates to Aleka and prompts her to ask you a question. And based on your response, she sends a message back to Home Assistant to make something happen. Yeah, I know. Google Home integrates with Home Assistant automatically. When you first start up Home Assistant, if you have any Google-based smart speakers connected to your home network, they'll be instantly available. No add-on required. So why use Aleka Media Player at all? Well, I use both. Google Home has great text-to-speech with Cloud Say. But as far as I know, there's no way to use actionable notifications with Google Home. And I also like Aleka devices specifically for playing music because they have an audio jack for connecting speakers. I like speakers. I think I pretty well forgot what number we're on. Let's go with number six. Companion app for iOS or Android. At this point, there isn't much that companion apps can't do. Yeah, you can use them to see all your Home Assistant UI views, but that's not really a big deal. For me, the best thing the apps can do is to let Home Assistant send you actionable notifications. So when something happens at home, you can get a notification and some buttons to choose how you want Home Assistant to respond. The notifications can also include pictures or custom sounds. And if that's not enough for you, the apps also use sensors in your phone to report GPS location, battery level, and total steps for the day. It can even tell you how many flights of stairs you went up. All that info can be viewed and used in Home Assistant. If you aren't using the Home Assistant companion app for your phone, you should be. And if you are using it, you probably aren't using its full potential. Uh, I actually got to the end of recording this video and realized that I'd left out Node Red. <laughs> so Node Red is number five and a half because it seemed better than going back and renumbering and doing a bunch of re-recording. <laughs> so number five and a half, Node Red. Home Assistant has built-in tools for making things happen. They're called automations, scripts, and scenes. Node Red is another tool for making things happen. It's actually kind of fun debating which is better, Home Assistant automations or Node Red, and I am happy to add fuel to that debate. Node Red is really pretty. It's got all these little boxes and colors. It just looks like a flow diagram, and that makes it easy to see what's happening in the automation. It's also easy to reuse parts and link flows together. But don't be fooled by the pretty diagrams. Inside those deceptively cute little boxes, you still have to use the same types of elements that you use with Home Assistant automations, like entity IDs, service calls, states, and attributes. And in Node Red, you have to use JSON formatting. JSON isn't that complex, but it looks scary to a non programmer like me. Also, Node Red introduces the idea of messages and payloads, which is another new concept to learn and can be confusing until you get the hang of it. I'm still hoping to get the hang of it soon. I like Node Red. I use it as often as I can. It's not as easy to use as it seems on the surface, but it is a very useful tool and it's worth learning how to use. Number seven, WireGuard. WireGuard uses your Home Assistant hardware as a VPN server so you can connect to your home network from anywhere. Nabucasa lets you connect to Home Assistant remotely, but WireGuard lets you also connect to every other device in your home. So you can also access things like LED controllers, cameras, and media servers from work or school, from any other computer, or even from your phone. I use WireGuard every single day. Number eight is Mosquito. Mosquito is an MQTT broker. In case you'd never heard of MQTT before, it's a communication system for smart home devices. 
The broker is the communication hub for all the smart devices, which are called clients. I think of the broker as a big board full of post-it notes. The clients are the ones posting the notes and reading the notes. But each client can only read notes published on specific topics. Years ago, MQTT was the primary means of communication in my smart home. It's not the primary method anymore, but it's still really useful, especially if you have devices that run Tasmoda. Which takes us to number nine, the Tasmoda integration and Tasmo backup. Tasmoda is a firmware for the most common little Wi-Fi controllers. Tasmo backup is an add-on that brings all your Tasmatized devices onto one screen. From there, you can control them, modify them, update them, and yeah, back them up. I wouldn't say Tasmo backup is essential, but it is definitely useful if you have as many Tasmoda devices as I do. When you're dealing with DIY smart home stuff, a good general rule of thumb is, if it ain't broke, don't update it. The only reason to break that rule is if some feature comes along that you just can't do without. Until recently, I had a bunch of devices running Tasmoda that hadn't been updated since they were installed in 2017. But that changed with version 9.2 of Tasmoda and the new Tasmoda integration for Home Assistant. Prior to version 9.2, there were two ways to bring your Tasmoda devices into Home Assistant. One was to manually create the entity in a text file. Ugh. And the other was using MQTT Auto Discovery. Now, with the Tasmoda integration, any device on your network that is running Tasmoda version 9.2 or newer is automatically discovered and brought into Home Assistant. That is a huge time saver. So as part of my Home Assistant redo, I'll be updating all of my Tasmoda devices. And finally, number 10, ESP Home. ESP Home is the reason that not all of my smart devices run Tasmoda. ESP Home lets you create customized firmware in a pretty simple text file format that works on the same little controllers as Tasmoda. I think the main advantage of ESP Home is that it communicates directly to Home Assistant without using MQTT like Tasmoda does. Using MQTT certainly isn't a bad thing. It's very reliable, but it is also one more possible point of failure. So when it isn't necessary, I don't use it. If you want my opinion about which is better, Tasmoda or ESP Home, I prefer Tasmoda to replace the stock firmware on pre-built devices like Sonoffs or anything that works with the Tuya app. I prefer ESP Home on the other hand when I'm building my own devices from scratch. What I suggest is that everyone try both systems and decide for yourself which one suits your specific need the best. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either one. Well, that's it. My top 10 Home Assistant priorities for getting started or for starting over. I hope that was helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.